All right. <sighs> Breathe in. Let's pretend I'm professional. Oh, y'all feeling good? Welcome along to the to the museum. You look all right. Yeah, it's all look great as well. Right, we're going to do um, a demonstration now. This is to do with uh, the progression of firearms in the in the military perspective. Right, we start off. Well, you start at the beginning, right? With black powder muzzle loading uh, firearms. This here is a, a flintlock firearm called a flintlock because it has a piece of flint which strikes a hardened piece of steel called, called a frizzen. And what this will do will ignite a small charge of powder inside the pan with a wee hole in the barrel called a touch hole, which will ignite the main charge in the breech of the firearm and send your, uh, your lead ball. In this case, it's a 75 caliber lead ball. Uh, downrange uh, in the direction of the enemy, please God. Um, the range on this particular firearm, because it's uh, a smooth bore, not particularly far, right? Uh, the average range was 50 to 60 yards. That's now the ball will go further than that, it'll go 120, 130 yards. But if you hit anybody 120 yards, not because you're lucky to hit him, because he was unlucky to be standing there, right? So Walter will give us a demonstration now of the loading and firing uh, practice of this flintlock musket. Take it away, Walter. Recover. Excellent. Thank you. So, so it was and so it was for a very long time, a couple of hundred years actually, until some bright sparks come up with the idea that like, putting all the dangerous stuff in the dangerous end, well that's just tech. So we've got to come up with a better way. So, changing the firearm didn't happen until they changed the ammunition change to self-contained ammunition. That, what that could do, you could load it then from the breech end. And once that came along, that was an absolute game changer. That changed everything. That meant they could load the firearm far quicker than just three rounds a minute. You could load the firearm, as long as you could drop the breech like that, insert your cartridge, close the breech, present, and give fire, rinse and repeat until you're told to stop. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate this because I don't have ammunition for this. And neither does anybody else. I don't think it's just me. Um, and, and that was all fine, right? Once uh, self-contained ammunition came along, all kinds of different ways of, of opening the breach to uh, load a fire came along. This is a call a falling block. You also had a rolling block that break action, that lever action, that bolt action, all kinds of things, right? But you were still limited to just one shot per minute. And you were still using black powder. That all changed in 1886 when the French came up with smokeless powder and relatively small bore ammunition uh, to the tune of kind of 30 calibre or thereabouts, right? And Tiger is going to demonstrate for us um, repeated, re uh, repeat fire from a bolt action rifle. Right, so in this we have uh, a magazine which takes 10 rounds, we only have three in it. Uh, right, and this can work as quick as you can operate the bolt. Thank you. Clear? Yep. Very good. So that was all fine. But you still had to operate the, the fire manually. You still have to work a bolt to make it fire. Right? 
Somebody come up with self-loading uh, using either a recoil operation or gas operation. In this instance, it's a gas-operated firearm. Now, I can't demonstrate self-loading for you because we live in Ireland and we have laws that prohibit self-loading firearms. I don't make the laws, I just follow them. So, um, now these magazines have been restricted to 10 rounds as is uh, to be legally compliant. But you load the magazine like so, pull back on the charging handle, which is here, and you load around. We have a safety oh, magazine, uh, sorry, safety lever right here. You knock off the safety, present your firearm, and fire. Show clear. Clear. These springs, safety on. Turn the microphone. <laughs> so that's our short demonstration, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you went like that. I hope you found it informative. Please uh, enjoy the rest of your day here at the museum, and we'll talk to you again soon.